Live from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, this is NASA Shuttle Operations, where we're standing by for the arrival of the NASA Shuttle Carrier Aircraft, designated NASA 905. The SCA, as it's known, is en route to Kennedy from Dryden Flight Research Center in California today. It's a modified 747 jetliner, modified to be able to carry a space shuttle on top, and it's been utilized over many years for this function. This, however, will be its final ferry flight as it arrives at Kennedy Space Center for the last time and is prepared to ferry Space Shuttle Endeavor from Florida to the California Science Center via Los Angeles International Airport in California. Currently, we're expecting landing at about 5.05 p.m. Eastern Time. The shuttle carrier aircraft will be landing on Kennedy's shuttle landing facility runway 15, which is the northwest to southeast runway. Beautiful weather conditions here in Florida. Despite uh, a front moving through over the last several days, bringing afternoon thunder showers, today the weather has cooperated. We have an entirely new weather pattern, uh, hopefully portending good weather for the entire ferry operation uh, and the operations to attach Space Shuttle Endeavor to the shuttle carrier aircraft. Once it arrives, the shuttle carrier aircraft will be prepared for this operation. Its pilots will uh, undergo uh, weather briefings and work with the team here at Kennedy Space Center to prepare the aircraft as well as Space Shuttle Endeavor. The shuttle carrier aircraft is commanded by veteran NASA pilot Jeff Moultrie, and his pilot flying with him is Bill Rickey. It's an entirely veteran crew of NASA pilots who have been with uh, NASA for many years, training astronauts and flying a whole series of aircraft, including these shuttle carrier aircraft. Also aboard the plane today are three flight engineers, Henry Taylor, Gary Ash, and Larry LaRose. They'll set the aircraft down and taxi over to the mate demate device, which is located here at the shuttle landing facility. The mate demate device is a special operation that uh, was put in place here at Kennedy Space Center and also at uh, the Dryden Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base in California. You can see it here in this picture. It enables the large 747 to move underneath it, uh, which it will do on Friday. Uh, what's going to happen after the shuttle carrier aircraft lands today and a whole series of operations begin on Friday morning at 5, Space Shuttle Endeavor will be rolled out of the Vehicle Assembly Building here at Kennedy Space Center and over the course of about an hour, it will be brought to this location at the mate demate device. There's a yellow sling that you can see in this picture that will be affixed to the orbiter, to the Space Shuttle Endeavor. And then the crane will lift Endeavor up into the air to a height that uh, will enable it to fit uh, underneath, or above actually, the 747 shuttle carrier aircraft, which will taxi in underneath it. And over the course of, uh, the day on Friday, with the operation expected to be completed by 5 or 6 p.m., we expect that uh, Space Shuttle Endeavor will be soft mated to the top of the shuttle carrier aircraft. And then on Saturday, some finishing touches will be performed to hard mate it. On Sunday, the shuttle carrier aircraft with Endeavor on top will back out of the mate demate device and then be readied for the ferry flight to California, which will begin at sunrise on Monday morning, September 17th.
Back in April of this year, Space Shuttle Discovery was uh, prepared for its final ferry flight. It flew to Dulles Airport in Washington, uh, and it was put atop NASA 905, the same shuttle aircraft, uh, sh shuttle carrier aircraft, and you can see the mating operation in this time-lapse video that we're looking at with the yellow sling going over top of Discovery, uh, the workers busily preparing it. And now you can see that uh, Discovery is lifted. There are four attach points for the yellow sling. The wheels are uh, retracted, landing gear is up, and Discovery is lifted into the air. Now the 747 shuttle carrier aircraft is brought into position, carefully lined up. It needs to match up with three attach points, one in the uh, front and two in the rear, the same attach points that attached the space shuttles to the external tanks when they flew into space. A soft mate will be achieved and the sling removed. And then the, uh, the work team will complete the operation of hard mating the space shuttle. Again, this is Space Shuttle Discovery. This was performed prior to Discovery's April 17th ferry flight to Washington, D.C. And now we see NASA 905, the shuttle carrier aircraft, as it makes its approach to Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where it will land this afternoon on shuttle landing facility runway 15. Once again, Jeff Moultrie is at the command. Bill Rickey is uh, in the right seat. And three flight engineers are all keeping an eye on systems. It's a heavily modified Boeing 747 with unusual handling characteristics. It uh, takes a lot of experience to fly, especially when a shuttle is mounted on top. This is the same team predominantly that ferried Space Shuttle Discovery to Washington and Space Shuttle Enterprise to JFK Airport in New York, also in April of this year. NASA 905 took off from Edwards Air Force Base at 8.30 Pacific time today and has made a direct flight here to Kennedy Space Center The shuttle carrier aircraft has the three struts with associated interior structural strengthening to uh, help facilitate carrying a shuttle on its back. It also has two additional vertical stabilizers from a normal 747, one on each end of the standard horizontal stabilizer, and this helps with stability. All the seats and interior furnishings have been removed. And it's an amazing aircraft. Landing gear are down. As the 747 shuttle carrier aircraft makes a sweeping turn over the space coast of Florida. Again, it's approaching from the northwest to the southeast and will land on runway 15 at the shuttle landing facility. NASA 905 is on final approach to the shuttle landing facility in preparation for NASA's final ferry flight of a space shuttle program.
We're looking at a view from a camera mounted on the vehicle assembly building. And now we see uh, a view from the runway looking to the southeast. And we have touchdown. Shuttle carrier aircraft returning to Kennedy Space Center for one final time. It will uh, perform this ferry flight across the country back to California and will then be flown to the Dryden Flight Research Center and retired. It will become a part of NASA's SOFIA program, no longer required for the space shuttle program. You can see the struts mounted on top of the shuttle carrier aircraft uh, to which Space Shuttle Endeavour will be affixed on Friday. The ferry flight will be uh, performed in several legs, whereas Space Shuttle Discovery flew directly to Washington, D.C., and Space Shuttle Enterprise directly from Washington to New York. NASA intends to uh, deliver Space Shuttle Endeavour to the California Science Center, which actually owns Endeavour and uh, has some say in the matter, and intends to have a welcome ceremony at Los Angeles International Airport on September 20th. Keeping that in mind, NASA managers have determined that the ferry flight will begin, weather permitting, on the morning of uh, Monday, September 17th at sunrise. This shuttle carrier aircraft with Endeavour atop will take off here from the shuttle landing facility and make a flyover of the Space Coast flying over Kennedy Space Center and the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex and the nearby Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, as well as Patrick Air Force Base, and additional areas of the Space Coast to uh, show off the shuttle carrier aircraft and Space Shuttle Endeavour one last time for the workforce and residents here of the Space Coast before flying back over the shuttle landing facility and waving goodbye and then heading off to the west. That flyover of the Florida area as well as some additional flyovers on the ferry flight will all be performed at an altitude of about 1,500 feet. It's a spectacular sight to see this large 747 with a space shuttle weighing 175,000 pounds itself mounted to the top. After departing the Kennedy Space Center area, the shuttle carrier aircraft will fly to the west and makes low flyovers of the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi, NASA's Machute Assembly Facility in New Orleans, and then it will head to Houston where it will uh, conduct a flyover of the Johnson Space Center and some other areas in the Houston area and land at Ellington Field on the afternoon of September 17th. It will remain there until the morning of September 19th, with the 18th being a weather contingency day just in case. It will depart Houston, take off for El Paso, Texas, refuel at Biggs Army Airfield, and then take off for Dryden Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base in California. It will arrive there midday and then on the morning of September 20th it will take off and again conduct a very low flyover at 1500 feet of several areas of Northern California including Sacramento and San Francisco 
and then it will uh, fly to the Los Angeles area, fly over a number of landmarks there before landing at Los Angeles International Airport between 11 a.m. Pacific time and noon. So a big week in store for the shuttle carrier aircraft, Space Shuttle Endeavor, and the crew, and the workforce here at Kennedy Space Center. And this is the first step with the arrival of the shuttle carrier aircraft here to the shuttle landing facility. NASA space shuttles are being moved to locations around the country for a next generation of explorers to view and to uh, gain inspiration from and to learn about the history of the shuttles. Discovery is at the Udvar Hazy Center, part of the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. It's the annex at Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C. Enterprise was the prototype space shuttle. It performed the approach and landing tests in 1977 that were a precursor to the orbital flights and really established the fact that the shuttle could land as a glider. And this particular aircraft that you're looking at right now, NASA 905, was the shuttle carrier aircraft that carried Enterprise on those approach and landing tests way back in 1977 and will be performing the final ferry flight of the space shuttle program. Endeavor, of course, will be going to the California Science Center in Los Angeles. And Space Shuttle Atlantis will stay here in Florida. On November 2nd, it will roll from Kennedy Space Center to the nearby Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. In Los Angeles, after it arrives on September 20th, the shuttle carrier aircraft will, it will be placed on a location on the uh, apron where at this very moment, a team of NASA and uh, its contractors is erecting a series of cranes and wind restraints to manually offload the shut shuttle from the top of the shuttle carrier aircraft in an operation that uh, has been performed only twice in recent history and only once in past history, and that uh, was at Dulles and at John F. Kennedy Airport in New York City to offload shuttles Discovery and Enterprise. So the team is in California right now at Los Angeles uh, International Airport building up this elaborate system of cranes and wind restraints that performs the same function as the mate de mate device that you looked at a few moments ago. It's a very slow process and a very careful process to safely remove the shuttle from the top of the shuttle carrier aircraft. And once that operation is complete, the two aircraft will go their separate ways. The shuttle carrier aircraft, NASA 905, will go back to Dryden Flight Research Center. Endeavour will be brought uh, and transported towed basically through the city streets of Inglewood and Los Angeles, California on a 12-mile trek from LAX Airport to the California Science Center on October 12th and 13th. There also will be a large ceremony and a ribbon-cutting ceremony on October 30th at the California Science Center to open up the Samuel Ocean Space Shuttle Endeavor Display Pavilion. That will permanently open Endeavor to the public. The flight crew aboard the uh, shuttle carrier aircraft is making final preparations to uh, disembark. 
Their work is pretty much done for the day. They will remain here at Kennedy Space Center and perform some work on the aircraft in preparation for the ferry flight, which again will begin on Monday, and for the mating operation that will begin about 6 a.m. on Friday. NASA 905 was one of two shuttle carrier aircrafts that NASA operated over the course of the 30-year space shuttle program. NASA 911 was retired recently, and it too is uh, no longer needed for the space shuttle program. It is serving NASA's SOFIA program. The shuttle carrier aircrafts performed a number of ferry operations over the years when space shuttles were diverted to an alternate uh, landing facility or early on when the shuttles were landing intentionally at Edwards Air Force Base uh, and then flown back to Kennedy Space Center to, uh, to launch again. The shuttle carrier aircraft, the modified 747, has four Pratt and Whitney gas turbine engines, each producing 50,000 pounds of thrust. With the space shuttle attached, the shuttle carrier aircraft is typically cruising at an altitude of about 13 to 15,000 feet, much lower than a commercial jetliner. And when there is a shuttle attached, it typically can go about a thousand miles before it needs to uh, fill her up. The aircraft holds a little bit more than 47,000 gallons of jet fuel. The ferry flight is a uh, meticulously planned operation that involves a team of NASA managers, space shuttle program transition and retirement personnel, weather officers, safety personnel to ensure that every leg of it is performed safely. There will be some reviews conducted over the next several days to review the weather and um, the progress of the mating operation before a go is given for the ferry flight on Monday morning. Again, that uh, flight, if, uh, if all goes well, is scheduled just after sunrise or at approximately 7.15 a.m. Monday, September 17th. In order to ensure that Endeavour arrives at Los Angeles International Airport on the prescribed day of September 20th. We'll begin the ferry flight on, on Monday, and then uh, there will be a weather contingency day spent in Houston on 
Tuesday, September 18th. Again, uh, the shuttle carrier aircraft and Endeavour will take off from Kennedy, perform a flyover of the Space Coast area, head to the west and fly over areas in Mississippi and Louisiana before flying over areas of Houston and landing there at Ellington Field where it will remain on the ground for the duration of the 17th and all day on the 18th and then take off on the morning of the 19th westbound towards El Paso, Texas. It will take on fuel in El Paso and uh, fly over White Sands Test Facility and then uh, head towards Edwards Air Force Base and the Dryden Flight Research Center. Throughout the ferry flight, NASA social media followers can follow hashtags pound OV105 and pound spot the shuttle. It will be uh, quite exciting to see the amount of people posting pictures and sending pictures uh, as the shuttle conducts its ferry flight across the United States from Florida to California. And the door is open, enabling the uh, crew to uh, complete its mission of the day. Again, they uh, departed Edwards Air Force Base at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, shuttle carrier aircraft commander Jeff Moultrie, pilot Bill Rickey, and flight engineers Henry Taylor, Gary Ash, and Larry LaRose. Again, they'll be remaining here at Kennedy Space Center in the area for the next several days, taking care of their aircraft and preparing it for the ferry flight while the workforce at Kennedy, which has been uh, processing Space Shuttle Endeavour and preparing it for this, uh, will perform the mate operation at the mate demate device. And we see the flight crew coming out of uh, NASA 905, out of the shuttle carrier aircraft. Again, this is an experienced group of pilots that has flown with NASA for many, many years in many capacities, including uh, training our astronauts. They fly a variety of aircraft from the T-38 high-performance jets to the massive 747. Uh, professional pilots, and this will be uh, their last Space Shuttle Program Ferry Flight. So with that, we'll uh, wrap up coverage and remind you that at 6.45 a.m. on Monday, September 17th, NASA Television will begin coverage of Endeavour's departure, which is scheduled for sunrise or right about 7.15 a.m. Eastern Time. 
and between now and then the f mate demate uh, the mating operation will take place at the mate demate device and uh, if there are any changes to these plans we will of course uh, update the NASA web so you can keep track of Endeavor ferry flight operations by going to www.nasa.gov shuttle.